All right, welcome back to learning as we play Age of Wonders 4, and we are working our way around the lands, really. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about recruiting a new a new uh, scout, honestly, and I think we're going to do that here after the archer, uh, just so we get someone we can order around manually. The auto explorer is a great option, it is, but it has its drawbacks too. So, yeah, we don't explore exactly what we want to potentially like to explore, but that's fine. So we are waiting and we're just going to do another turn. So we regain all our stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to send our wolf here to pick up the mana crystals. Then we're going to send these boys down in the passage. So we walk onto them and we click enter. You need to have movement for it. If you don't, you kind of block it. Ooh, we find some cartographer thing here, and it looks quite empty down here, which is decent. And we'll send these down too, and we'll just plop them on top of this army, so they're merged. And we're going to send down our wolf boy as well, and move them off here. So we're going to explore underground a little bit. Something to notice about underground is you can excavate some of these walls. Not all of them, but some of them. But you have to unlock this with Imperium, which we can do next turn, so we can show, show that off. And we can pick another tome. So we have researched most, if not all, of the tome we picked first. So now we pick another one. We can pick any, regardless of the affinities we have. In, in fact, this will give us affinity to whatever we pick, so we can build whatever we like. We don't have to stick with what we got. So, for example, we could go into Chaos, we could go into Materium, we could go deeper into Nature, we could start going into the Light, we could go into Shadow uh, or Astral. It doesn't really matter what we pick here. And I think, I think I'll told people, I think, I wonder, maybe, nah. They are nature people and light people. Definitely not shadow people. Maybe this, maybe that. Mm, I don't see fire for the water people. So actually let's go with the Tome of Enchantment. So we get unit enchantments which increase our physical damage, which is pretty good, I think. And... We get another little summon skill and a few other things here. So let's do that. We open another line here. Enchantment is truly a union of the worldly and the arcane, as it requires both a steady smiting hand and magical prowess. Enhance weaponry, tools of labor, and even your people to see your empire rise above any other. Very good. That's fantastic. So. Uh, we can pick something here. We don't have all that many ranged units. We have a few more close range units. So, um, Demolisher is good. So, we can destroy reinforced obstacles. And we have a chance to apply Sunder Defense. We'll go with that. It's not a straight up damage bonus. But it needn't be. Okay, we can summon the Wild Animal. Uh, you can see on the blue circle where we can cast it. So we can summon it directly into an army or we can summon it on ourselves. This is a spell we prepared like four turns ago or two. So we'll summon it on the wolf and we got a level two spider, which we only have a chance for. It's not guaranteed a level two, so that's pretty cool. Um, since they're quite costly in upkeep, we're not going to get another one at this point. That's fine for us. We want to combine these armies because we get bonuses with animals. Um, but for now, it's fine because whatever they do together, as long as they stand close enough, that is going to happen regardless. It just helps a little bit with uh, positioning. Okay, we unlocked with the cartography thingy uh, the position of these haunted halls, which is a two danger... Silver level ancient wonder, which might be worthwhile checking out, quite honestly. Though we might not be strong enough yet to deal with it. And maybe we want to take care of these creatures here as well. We are definitely strong enough now. So we're just going to do that and then we engage. Oh, they actually... No, 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 please don't hurt us. Uh, we could go and carefully harvest them. Meaning we lose 50 knowledge per turn, which is a lot. Which is a lot. Uh, but we would get 309 food in Harrington, 
which is also a lot. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to let them grow. It's fine. Uh, poor little plants. We, we're plant friends, definitely. We like plants, so we're not going to hurt them. And he's going to pick up the gold. That's fine. And we're going to split the armies a little bit. We're going to take our main boy and these and the archers to be our main army. And this guy here just gets the gets the B team. Now, we have the material to unlock this, the excavation, which we're going to do. Now we can click. Uh, if we click on our boy, we get this option here. And we click it. And we see there's nothing in reach for us to excavate. But down here, there are going to be things we can excavate. Which might be a good idea. Because to get the bonuses from this, we're going to have to build an outpost, which then occupies it. And these can be very powerful, just because they already give you Imperium, which is hard to come by. Uh, plus, it gives us 25 uh, research thingy. And souls, which we don't really need, honestly. Uh, but maybe, if we ever go into Necromancy down the road. So, we need orders for our newly recruited troops from the Rally of the Legions, which is fantastic. So, we're going to send them over here. And eventually put them down in the underground passage. I really like how they look. That's fantastic. The Frogo soldiers. Alright, we can annex another province. Now remember, uh, we're still blocking off their access to the lands. We want them to expand this direction. And not this direction. So we might want to take something valuable. Or we just kind of go this way. This actually is pretty valuable. Because there is a strategic resource sitting here. I think. Um, it has a floor, no, it, where, where is it? I can't click on whatever is under here. There we go. It's a mana stash. Okay, so that's not valuable. <laughs> it's something you pick up and then it's gone. So this might be more valuable because it has, uh, this area. We don't get the bonus because they're occupying it. But, uh, honestly, we're going to leave it to them. Because they are our friends. We're going to integrate them eventually. So, whatever they get, we get kind of too. So, it's fine. In this case, we're going to leave it to them. Now, what do we need? What do we actually need? I said quarries, right? So, we're just going to build another quarry out here. Yeah, we'll build another quarry out here. That's fine. So, now we have two quarries, meaning we should have almost everything boosted here. Let's check what we need in the income department and our city building. Still, I don't like this. Draft is too low. So we're going to go for a blacksmith, which increases that. And we are going to go, since we're going slowly down on gold, also on a market. And a stonemason, maybe ahead of all of them, so they're built quicker. That's what we're going to do right now. Later, we're going to get this, which is pretty good. And... We'll see about that once the time comes. A spell is ready to cast. We could summon another wild animal, but again, high upkeep. We don't really need them right now. Uh, our alignment has changed to good, which gives us positive bonus relation on free cities, which is pretty good. Or rulers that are neutral to us, or better. Now, this says uh, the city can be integrated, which is fine and fun, because we could just turn this into one of our cities, and you can tell we, we still have a bunch more options. So that way, these armies would go away, but this would be our city then, um, which is a pretty good thing, but we kind of box them in, so we're not going to do it for now. Plus, we can't afford it really. It costs a lot of money, and I think founding and building our own might be cheaper than that. But I don't quite remember. Uh, let's go down here. Nothing there. Well, they could still move, but we're just going to forfeit it because I want to keep the armies together and I don't care to use the movement. So we're just going to do another turn. And there we go. A new day dawns. Oh, very good. Okay. This is a race relation kind of event. So sometimes your people are just going to give you quests and be like, hey, uh, do something. And race relation is um, all owned cities of that race will receive a temporary stability bonus and all met free cities receive a relationship bonus. So that's pretty decent to have and do. Um, so what we can do is... We can lose some stability, but we get draft, 
in, in all our cities, which is pretty cool. Um, but stability, as we saw, is important, and we don't have too much of that, so we'll go and help them out do their requirement of building three farm improvements, which is a little bit sad because what we've already built doesn't really count. However, we have Berkshire still to upgrade, and they can use some farms. So what we're going to do, what we, what I just said we're not going to do, is we're actually going to block them off now. Uh, so we're going to take this, the farm. So they have to go this way, and that's fine. I want to go this way and that way. So we are, we're getting a little bit closer. Eventually, later down the line, we can always switch out the farmers for something different. If we don't feel like we need them anymore. That's fine. So don't worry about it too much. Let's get our troops deeper in here. There's a dread penguin, which personally I just adore. Sadly, this is kind of dark. But uh, yeah, this is, this is fun. If they are in the water, the preview is more water-themed, which is also great. You can see one of our units has this little eye, because they are hidden in this area. So any army seeing us, unless they're standing right next to us, will think we have only four people in here, which is pretty cool. So we have produced a tavern, but our queue is still full. A message was received. They are happy with us. Let's negotiate. See, maybe if they want to go retreat. We could do a wizard bond, which slowly increases our um, our relationship. So that's pretty good. We have this going now. This just keeps going in the background. It's a little bit like our whispering stone with the others. And we could go have a pact. And they would like to have open borders, which is great for us, so we can explore there. And maybe they're also fine with the provisions claiming pact, which we're not going to do right now because it doesn't benefit us much. Uh, but that's fine. Let's check something real quick. Do we get a double bonus from our resources here? We have this twice. And it says unique global effects. I don't think this actually stacks. Meaning if we, if we check here on our friends... It is Rainbow Clover plus 100. So it only counts once. Meaning we can use this resource here in discussing with them and, and see what, what, they, what they're what they willing to give us for this. So for a time, we can give them this. Treaties last indefinitely but can be broken. So we give them this. And we get a one-time thing, or we get a relationship bonus out of it. Um, hmm. This is a good deal. I mean, we don't need it. We literally do not need it. So let's give them that for... It's just going to be a gift. It's just going to be a gift from our end. So, so they like us better. That's fine. Uh, we have the send gift option, literally, where we can just give them straight up gold for them liking us a little bit better. But, yeah, that's good. Alright, so they now get this clover, which is good for them. And they like us for it, which is good for us. See, you have this little green chevron uh, pointing upward, meaning the relations here are improving. Nothing is happening here. But with them, boys, we're getting on swimmingly and it's good difference so these boys need order and we barely made them go down there now okay exploring these things is very dangerous and very costly so we're gonna use our other hero put them in this hole and see if we can even do this we don't have to we can we can retreat uh, Tania Greyblood, which is her. She has a claim on this for some reason. Okay, so this is a battle we're not going to win. A high-risk battle you can potentially win, but you're very unlikely to win. Uh, so we're just going to remove ourselves until we have a bit better of an army. But we can still excavate the thing. Um, and it doesn't cost you movement, which is kind of good. So you can expand all your movement and make sure that... 
you go where you want to go. We're going to set up an outpost here still because they just cost 10 gold to upkeep. And we got another archer unit here, which we're going to send there. They are done producing what we told them to produce. So next up, we're going to want to get the workshop because it gives us draft and production. And after that, they can start producing us some money. Or we go with this, which also gives us money and also just makes it a little bit better. Special province improvements, which, by the way, we haven't talked about yet. My, my. Um, let's see here. We can get another Whispering Stone on both ends here. Doesn't really help us at the moment because I don't think there are any more free cities. If you zoom out, you eventually get this tactical view, I think they call it. And I don't see another free city, really. Like this is a free city, so there's no one for us to give the Whispering Stone to. We can give Whispering Stones to our own cities, increasing stability over time. But that's not exactly what we want to do, honestly. So let's move in a little bit further and just end this turn here. Now, keep in mind, I'm not playing optimally at all. I'm playing how I know kind of how to play. But at this point, probably my armies are too weak. Uh, my expansion is too weak. It's just, uh, it's not ideal. But I like to just sort of putter around. And this game isn't so punishing if you do that. Other games of the same type are way, way, way more punishing uh, in, in that kind of regard. So we uncovered an area and there are some uh, marauders there. But there's also this little thing so we can get a wind ranger out of it a wind rager i'm sorry another tier u turn uh, tier two unit my my today speaking is difficult so we're just going to attack these or rather obliterate them let's be quite honest our spider almost died but well almost isn't actually died so uh what we're going to want to do is build another outpost here because eventually, we're going to want to claim the Haunted Halls. And we're definitely not going to build cities down here. She's not going to like it. It's fine. She has a distant claim on us, so uh, it reduces the relationship slightly. Let's excavate this thing here. Honestly, you're never going to find all that much interesting stuff in the excavation. Sometimes you find a unit to take, sometimes like that. But apart from this, it's uh, fairly straightforward. Now, notice these guys, they can actually go over water because they are flying. So, that's pretty cool. And we can use the unit enchantment sundering blades. Let's keep going a little bit here. Oh, this is good. Awaken tools is really good. Especially once we got the stability up through other bonuses. Which we will eventually have. Um, or we can go here, which is also fine. Get some more resistances going. I think we'll start out with this. A hero leveled up. Nice. We want that. And he is going to have Sundering Strikes. Which is something we unlocked, sort of, with our research just now. Uh, rulers have declared a friendship. That's good. Actually, hello, pronouncements. Um, I can't declare a friendship. Okay. Would you like to have a wizard bond? Oh, they have a declar declaration of rivalry on us, so we can't really treat with them properly, friendly-like. Okay, then. Uh, let's go back underground. And we are just going to keep everything as it is down here. Now, not we're not really adapted to underground. And underground, I think, is kind of fun, but also very tough because there is just a lot, um, a lot less space than upstairs. So we're not going to do all that much down here. Uh, we might want to excavate this just because we can, because we're standing kind of next to it anyway when we move. So we're just going to do this. But um, yeah, you're going to see it's not, it's not super ideal. Let's send the rager over here and I think we're gonna take this out just for the experience before we leave but that will be our little adventure down below and oh yeah let's build a wild speaker who can summon beasts in combat they're not great beasts but they're beasts nonetheless and we get some bonuses from that uh, we could 
get this, which is kind of nice. A outpost costs 50% less and one turn less to build. And it starts with a palisade wall. So we're going to take this. Um, maybe it still applies to the outpost down there. At least the wall, not the cost. We already paid that. Oh boy, okay. Uh, we uncovered this Viver nest. Oh, actually there is uh, the lady. She, she has, she has people down here. That's why she has all these claims too. All right, yeah, it started with the Palisade wall, which is nice. So we can now build a work camp, which allows us to annex this area, even though, well, okay. So this thing is gonna hunt us, um, which is obviously suboptimal. So let's move our troops in a little bit closer. <laughs> We're not gonna wanna go in there. And we will move our troops over here. So it will attack us on our next turn because this is red and we uncovered it. And if we do that, they attack us. That's just, that's just kind of what they do. And we will be fine with that because if it attacks us here, it'll fight all of these. So that's fine. Orders required for our butterman. Let's bring them in because we want our troops to be nice and snack. Okay, very good. Here is our explorer. And this one we're going to manually move around. So we want them to go check this area out for us. These we'll just keep as it is. We can have the spell tempered shields now okay let's improve our uh our scouts slightly give them more vision range uh later with the spell not right now but later Ooh, we can annex another province which is very nice and we're gonna build yet another farm because we're good with farming and we still have this quest going if we remember for a fine meal do we want to build a unit? I generally find it's good to keep your queue full. If you can build, just build. You're going to need them eventually anyway. So let's build a wild speaker and it'll be there in a while. So we found the outpost. We Ooh, another. I enjoy this. This is one of the fun things about these games. Just expanding a little bit. Uh, which is one of the X's out of 4X. Now I said we're going to leave them this. And I'm going to stick by my word for once there. Now, what else do we need to build? We could build another farm because we need another farm for our quest there. And I think we're just going to do exactly that. We'll just build yet another farm. Very good. This uh, gives us our quest and they give us crops in all our cities, which is lovely. And we get stability everywhere and relationships are increasing with a free city. Or we could get um, 30 mana per turn. Personally, I like the food. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go for the food. More expansion, more good. Okay now. So we could give our army sundering blades, which I think is better because we have more, but it costs us more in upkeep too. It costs us two per unit, so we have four seven units, so 14 mana upkeep on having this just running in the background. Or we could go for spell tempered shields, which costs us four. For the moment, which is also good. And I think we're going to start with that. Instead of the very expensive option. And we're going to end our turn. Uh, Krag Tour, another free city. Let's let's have a look at them. We can't really do anything with them at this moment. Uh, and we can see that the lady here. Or they. Um, they are quite far advanced in, in dealing with them. And treating with them. So even if we wanted to start, it wouldn't work. And they're starting out at war with us for some reason sometimes that's just what it go what it is but we could go down and conquer them that would be fine actually we might want to do that just so we get a bit of a siege going early and it's not a bad idea okay so they took that now they see it it's coming for us let's do auto resolve this we're not losing anything which is lovely Lost a bunch of health, but uh, that's, you know, just to be expected. We are supposed to obtain a focus crystal, which is difficult. Because this is something we might not ever find on the map, honestly. But we might be able to trade for it, potentially. So, um, we could decline this quest. 
do we take it? Mm, I'm not sure. We'll take it. We have some time to figure it out. 25 turns is plenty. Uh, let's bring our armies back home so they can heal up and then we're going to rearrange them. And first we fight this boy here. Okay, well, we let them go. We like them. We don't want them to, to die, so that's okay. And now we go up here. They need orders, obviously. Now we're going to want to get this tower. It gives us view range and 8 hex radius, which is nice. They need orders, so we bring them closer to here, where we want to join up our armies eventually. A ruler leveled up. Very good. And he's going to get archery too. And we get one of those uh, signature skills here. These are always kind of the same-ish, sort of. What selection you get is different. Um, for a ranged person, I think... I like blink. Problem is, in auto combat, the AI uses this to get closer to the enemy. Instead of keeping it uh, to turn away. So you have to keep a little bit of an eye on it. But this is really good, because you get away. Um, so we'll take this. This is good for a ranged unit. And we can en enchant our shields now. So these now have this cool runic enchantment on them. So they're better. And better is more good, obviously. Cities may expand to provinces located to plus two provinces further from the center. Amazing thing. Amazing. is is so powerful. So we're definitely going to take that. Let me go up, and we see that we see not all that much. Yes, we know we can integrate this. We don't want to because, well, we don't have the Imperium, so even if we wanted to, it doesn't work. Uh, they gave us a compliment, which is nice. And our Whispering Stone has returned because we have reached the maximum amount of allegiance here. This is not going to go down anymore, I don't think. Well, eventually, but right now it's it's all good. We're, we're fixed. This is, this is the greatest extent... That we're going to get. And we can trade. The trading still costs more or less the same it feels. 6 for 12. But it's okay. We're all good. Maybe we're going to integrate them. Why not? It's It can help because they, they're already fully established. Like They have all this stuff. And you definitely get more income from them if they're your direct city than your vassal. But you also don't have to worry about them. You don't have to uh, work with them at all. They're just gonna manage themselves. Which is also kind of cool. Uh, we'll wait here because we want to go underground and move our troops up. Uh, we don't have enough movement to move up so we're just gonna clump around this exit there. And we clump these here as well. Yeah, you have to wait. You have to wait. Ooh, new province. Always getting excited about these. All right, what do we want? <laughs> Could go for the fisheries, which is pretty good for us. And I think we're going to actually go do that. We don't need another farm, so let's get the fishery. Oh, there's a howling castle over there, which we might want to go explore. But I think this is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If not, or if you have any questions, please just leave them down in the comments. And I hope to see you around next time. Until then, bye-bye.